All right, hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeline of CRM. And today I am joined by Scott Greenberg. How are you doing, Scott? I'm good, thanks. And where are you today, Scott? Los Angeles, California. Excellent. So Scott's just up the road from me here. I'm in uh, in San Diego. So for, for over two decades, uh, Scott has really energized audience with his high energy uh, uh, leadership and peak performance presentations. And he has presented in all 50 states as well as across the world. D uh, discussing both skill set and mindset. He owned uh, Edible Arrangements franchises in LA and he has a Manager of the Year awards um, out of more than a thousand locations worldwide. So uh, obviously a highly successful career. And now one of the things you talk about, Scott, is uh, you talk about leadership, but you also talk about coaching. And I think this is something that's becoming more and more critical for people to understand that as, as leadership transitions, that the coaching element has become more and more important. Uh, absolutely. If you look at retail businesses, and I do a lot of work with franchises, especially a lot of retail businesses and franchises, there's a correlation between high sales uh, customer experience and the employee experience. And I think that we start off by really coaching our employees, really developing them, that leads to better customer experiences, which leads to more revenue. And I think that a lot of business people really um, don't put enough time and energy into understanding how their employees tick. They complain about them, but they don't spend enough time investing in them. And when they do on the back end, they'll save a lot of time and it'll grow their business. Part of the issue, though, I think, Scott, you would agree, is that people really don't know how to coach, right? It's not an innate skill that most people have. I mean, most people relate coaching maybe back to high school, maybe some guy standing on the sidelines screaming at them, right? Which, right. Is, a, which is a form of coaching, but it's not one that translates very well into the workplace. So talk to me a little bit about what is the essence of real coaching? I think the essence of real coaching is the ability to identify what that one person in front of you needs and then respond accordingly. What a lot of leaders do and managers and, and coaches is they just have their one style and they apply it to everyone, which is the same thing as a doctor who basically diagnoses everyone the exact same way and prescribes them the exact same thing. That doctor would be guilty of malpractice. Mm -hmm. Most people in coaching management positions are guilty of managerial malpractice because they're not taking the time to ask questions, to properly diagnose, and think about what is the best corresponding coaching methodology given what that employee needs. Yeah, and I think you, you hit on an interesting point here. It's because, yes, we tend to look at – our employees as a homogenous group really uh, often rather than seeing them as very as as different people who receive information in different ways and i think that's part of coaching isn't it figuring out how to communicate to individuals yeah yeah right but there's still that first half before you you know communicate what your thoughts is asking a lot of questions and properly diagnosing what's actually going on and i think that most People don't do it in leadership positions because they're too busy. Like I tell my audiences, busyness is the enemy of leadership. Right. It's you're so caught up in your tasks, you're not actually leading people. And that's where you get into trouble. So how do you advise then leaders? I mean, that's a really good point there about business being the enemy of leadership. So how do you advise leaders to make themselves less busy, if you like, with all the activities and more focused on the leadership aspects? Well, first of all, I think that anybody in a leadership management position needs to clarify their role. There, there's nothing more important for anyone in a leadership position than to bring out the best in their people. You know, it's sort of like the job of a parent is to raise kids to be independent and mm -hmm. honestly to, to no longer need kind of depressed about as a parent. But for a leader, for a manager, we our, our primary objective is to elevate the performance of our people so that we don't have to intervene, so that we don't have to do as much work ourselves. Our job is to enable their success. So first, it's clarifying that that is your role in the first place. That's the most important thing. Then it's the ability to diagnose where people are at by looking at their skill set, which is their knowledge, but also their mindset, which is their emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. how they feel about their work. So we need to coach both things, their skill set as well as their mindset. So one of the interesting things that uh, that you you touched upon there is 
the emotional intelligence part. Uh, and that's something I think that you know, some people f f feel a little uncomfortable with because it, it seems to be wandering over into the touchy feely or something that's maybe not as, uh, as tangible as some other, and some other approach. So how do you help people understand what emotional intelligence really means and how it can be leveraged successfully? Well, first of all, I appreciate that there are some people who are resistant to soft skills, emotional mm -hmm. intelligence, and touchy feelings. I appreciate them, and I want them out there because in my businesses, I'll destroy them every single time. So that is the mentality of mediocrity. You know, I come from the franchise world, as you know, mm -hmm. and what's great the franchise world is you have all these people doing these, the exact same things, the same systems, but they're getting different results. Yeah. I, I so And I look at the differences between them and the primary difference is that ability to manage mindset and all that humanity. You know, at any given point, we're always touching, we're always feeling. The idea is to manage that stuff. It doesn't mean constantly preach positivity. Mm -hmm. If anything, what I preach is clarity, is noticing your emotions and clearing your head of those things so that you can approach this objectively. Uh, so you just look at top performers and they all have in common, in addition to best practices and hard work, on top of that, they had a great mindset. They're good at that emotional stuff, and they also understand how those emotional, psychological pieces directly impact how they execute. An example I'll share with my audience is, is that marketing isn't just about advertising. It's about mm -hmm. patience. And managing employees isn't just about directing them. It's about inspiring them, You know, making them want to do the work. Customer service isn't just about a transaction. It's about a connection. It's about an experience. There's an emotional piece there. If emotions drive consumer behavior, and certainly no one argues that, mm -hmm. to understand they also drive employee behavior. So if we want to bring up the best in our employees, we've got to be willing to go to that emotional place where they are at. Yeah, and and there's another interesting point thing you touched on earlier as well, is and that is, you know, leaders empowering people to do their jobs right and i think one of the things that many people in in leadership positions struggle with sometimes it's like if i'm if i empower you to do your job scott you may not do it exactly the same way i would do it but i have to i have to trust the result right maybe even if i don't 100 percent agree with the way you do it and i think that letting go sometimes and letting people do things in their own way is tough Right. Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, some people say I have, you know, franchisees who come to me and they say my approach to management is hire great people and stay out of their way. And I actually don't agree with that. I certainly don't believe we should micromanage people, but I think that people get bored and they disengage. And so we need to feed the fire so it doesn't burn out. So um, I think it's important that we, you know, stay involved with people. We don't micromanage them, but we partner with them. And if I have an employee who has a great skill set and has a great mindset, well, then I might give them a little bit more slack and trust them to do things their way. But if it's not someone who has a high skill set, high mindset, well, then they need a little bit more involvement from me. So it all depends on the credibility. Um, but if they know what's going on and they have the right attitude about it, well, now I know this is someone who I can uh, at least be a little bit more open to. And there's obviously that balancing act, isn't there, again, because you could then stray too far into micromanagement where the person is like, well, why don't you just do it yourself? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And the problem with micromanaging, well, there's a few problems, mm -hmm. but it it, uh, it down coaches the employee. It's mm -hmm. disrespectful. Um, but also it just takes up more of my time mm -hmm. as, as a manager. And so if I've done a good job coaching someone the bonus for me, the reward for that, is I don't have to be quite as involved. My job is just to feed the fire, but to let them kind of run things. Yeah. And so when it comes to coming back to coaching, so should coaching be, I mean, coaching is something you should be doing on an ongoing basis and always looking for, you know, coachable moments, et cetera. But should it also, is it also something that you should have formally, uh, that you would recommend that people formally put on the docket, say, you know, once a month, once a quarter, Scott, this is our coaching session where it's completely dedicated to you. Is that something that you would advocate? What I advocate is coaching should be ongoing and constant. Mm -hmm. It should be, a, you know, a, a series of moments. It might be a five second praising someone to ensure that they feel appreciated or a quick adjustment. I think if we wait for a monthly or, you know, semi-annually reviews, well, it, it's too late. It should happen constantly in the moment. I'm a parent. 
I coach two kids. I don't interact with them once every six months and review how they're doing. It's mm-hmm. constant and it's ongoing. That's the only way I can make sure that I'm bringing out their best. Let's let's hope. Yeah. I think I think it should be um, less formal but ongoing. Yeah, and and what you touched upon there, it should be as much catching people doing things right and well as opposed to some people think your know, coaching is like just correcting all the time or catching you doing so. Well, you're not quite doing that correctly. Well, you're right. And also, I think it's important to distinguish between coaching and reviewing. Mm-hmm. Things like annual reviews, you know, I guess that's important to assess what has been accomplished, what the person's goals are, and, you know, should they be let go? Should they be promoted? I think that needs to happen in a work environment. Coaching is different. Coaching is the ongoing process of elevating that employee. So it's almost like the difference between a teacher teaching someone and then giving them a progress report. Mm-hmm. In between the progress reports, there's instruction, there's encouragement, there's praise, there's reprimanding, there's all those things. And so coaching is less about e- evaluating than is about elevating. And right. when you evaluate as a coach, it's only so you know how to coach. Mm-hmm. And like I said, uh, going back to what I said earlier, unfortunately, a lot of people's experience of coaching is you know, back in high school. And they tend to, again, think that it's it's all very, it's very directive. Um, how do you help people take that step back and resist those temptations and really try to understand what's going on with the employee. And as you said, like ask good questions and really, really dig in and discover what's behind the way they're operating. Well, I have co-created a coaching model with a colleague of mine who's the co-founder of the Mendocino Farms restaurant chain. Um, I did some consulting and then, you know, he and I are friends and colleagues. And so we have developed a methodology uh, that we are now out teaching and speaking mm-hmm. on and training other people. That's all about a very simple process for any employee for a given task to diagnose their skill set and mindset. And then depending on the combination of those things, there is a corresponding leadership methodology. We're not the first people to approach coaching this way. But in my experience, my opinion, most of the other methodologies that are out there that are about you know diagnosing and leading are very complicated. They are cumbersome. I don't agree with all elements. But they also don't seem to come from someone who's actually been there doing it. They mm-hmm. seem like it seems like content created by academics for consultants. Right. We wanted to create a model for that 19 year old assistant manager at a yogurt shop who just needs a quick and easy tool that she can use right there in real time. So we have created this methodology, which is now a big part of uh, you know my repertoire of what I, I'm mm-hmm. teaching mm-hmm. leaders. And so that's a, just that's a point you just mentioned. The nineteen-year-old um, manager at the yogurt shop, right? Is is coaching? Are there different? Do you adapt it generationally, or is it something that applies to everybody? I mean, do you have to approach people of the different generations differently when it comes to coaching, or is is it pretty much universal? I think that it is overall it's universal. I think the nuances have to be specific to a generation, but more specifically to that person. You know, I hate to characterize their integration any more than I hate to characterize them by their race or by their gender. Sure. Uh, I think in any, in any group, there is a lot of individuality. And to just say, well, this person is 30 years old, therefore they're entitled and want immediate feedback and they're always on their phones. Um, as tempting as it is to, you know, accept those stereotypes, it's not useful for coaching the individual in front of you. Yeah, no, that's an that's an excellent point. And just uh, just at a very high level, what what is your approach? What is your model? What does it look like? Um, it, it, well, it, it would take me probably three hours to explain it because that's what the workshop is. Mm-hmm. But uh, just to summarize it, we basically evaluate an employee's mindset and their skill set mm-hmm. for a specific task, and it changes from task to task. Right. Same way a student who's going to school is taking different classes and has different grades for each class. There's going to be a different diagnosis for every task that's part of an employee's job. So we're going to break it down by evaluating their skill set and their mindset, and then based on the, the either high or low, which creates four possible combinations. So for each combination, there's a certain level of, um, of providing knowledge or providing um, something to support their, their mindset. So someone already has the knowledge of how to complete a task, they don't need more training. Right. So if they're forming, it's probably some kind of a mindset issue. So it's understanding how to identify what that mindset issue is and applying that. But I think that too often we assume that someone has a mindset problem when really they don't know how to complete the task. And that's our fault because we haven't trained them and made sure that they really understand how to complete that task. 
So a big part of what we talk about is really taking time to understand what the real problem is. Is it what they know or is it what they feel? Yeah, now this is this is fascinating because uh, as I said, I think most people would probably coach the same way for everything, but you're saying that you approach it differently depending on the task and you look at the two elements depending on the task, which is obviously a much um, more surgical approach to coaching, if you like. Yeah, again, an analogy that I use in the workshop is, you know, I show up that, that picture of the doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, a doctor doesn't just call someone healthy or not healthy. Mm -hmm. They break it down by all these different parts of health. It's their skin, it's their heart, it's their lungs, it's, you know, it, it's everything. Um, and then they take time to diagnose and then they prescribe a different treatment based on what's there. That's what we have to do. If you really want to bring out the best in people. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, I couldn't agree more. Listen, um, Scott, we're bumping up against the end of our time, but before we go, I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do, how they can learn more about you. I help um, franchisees and business leaders grow their businesses by focusing more on how they think, how they lead, and how they serve, what I call the human side of high performance. So I give presentations and workshops and training on uh, specific ways people can combine great operations with the human side so they can get the best performance uh, available. So I do keynotes and I do workshops. Um, I The specific areas I get into, in addition to you know general peak performance and leadership, are how to build high performance teams to bring out the best in employees, providing exceptional customer experiences. And then this newer workshop, which we have been discussing, is the Coaching Cure, which is a specific tool to give people to help them diagnose their employees and prescribe the right kind of leadership. So a combination of, of keynotes and workshops and trainings. And uh, I've been very thrilled to be doing this for a while. I love my clients and uh, I'm very grateful. Yeah, and I would, uh, I would really encourage people to check out uh, scottgreenberg.com. Check out the, the coaching offering. I think it's one of the most overlooked things in, in business is developing coaching skills. As I said at the outset, it's not a it's not an innate skill for most people. It's something, but it's something that can be learned. And I think the upside of learning how to coach properly if you're a leader uh, is huge. So uh, I would encourage you to check out Scott's coaching program. Okay, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.